All right, everyone, we are at day three. If you have been here for all three days of this workshop, I am so proud of you. If you are showing up for the second time and you have one to catch up on, I'm so proud of you. And if you are showing up for the first time, I'm so proud of you. Um, this workshop has been a lot of fun so far. I hope that you have gotten a lot of value out of it. Um, and if you're showing up again for the first time or you've missed a training, listen, it's okay. Um, those replays are here in the Facebook group or they're also gonna come to your email if you are uh, on my email list for this workshop, which is just, you know, you gave your email by coming into this Facebook group. So it will go out to you. Um, as well. So no worries if you need to catch up on day one or two or both. Um, these kind of do go in order, but also every day has a lot of standalone takeaways that I think are going to be impactful for you. So if we have not met, I'm Chelsea. I am a life and relationship coach who really focuses on helping parents through the big transitions. Um, that might be that you found out you're pregnant. That might be that you are in the midst of the postpartum weeks and months and that first, you know, couple of years after having a baby, or maybe you are three, four, five years out from having a baby and you're realizing that your relationship has just gotten a little off track. It's not where you want it to be. It's not, you know, at its end of the rope. You're not here at an SOS, but you're here because things have to change in order for this relationship to go the way that you want it to um, and in order for you to really enjoy this life you've built with your partner. So this challenge was really inspired by um, a lot of the couples I work with who just realize that they can get in some patterns that aren't helpful and that they don't have a lot of time to talk because, you know, life is busy and they have realized that maybe they're spending that time uh, that they can communicate, having unproductive conversations or getting into arguments or following these patterns that just escalate. And then they both walk away feeling bad um, and feeling like, you know, they didn't get resolution and they didn't have a respectful conversation. And that is what we want to nip in the bud. <laughs> that is what we want to change. Um, this is called fighting better because I don't think it's a realistic goal to say that we're never going to argue. We're never going to disagree. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to have those nasty yelling arguments. You don't want to show your kids, show your baby um, communication that is disrespectful. And that includes, you know, those patterns that are just not great. So you are going to disagree. You are going to have different opinions and ideas and you and your partner have two different lived experiences. So it only makes sense that you're not always going to see eye to eye. You're going to have different ideas in your mind. And I want to help you to both be who you are and hear yourself and have your own voice and also respectfully and purposefully know your partner, hear their voice and find ways to work together. So we are talking about why, how, and when to communicate with more respect and results. So again, this is something I've gone over all three days. These trainings are built to be about 20 minutes a day for three days. That's a total of an hour that could totally change your life. I promise if you follow day one, day two, day three in the workbook, and you go through the prompts and you really spend some time with this training, it is going to radically change the way things are happening in your relationship. It is going to start from the inside, it is going to come out, your partner's going to notice, you're going to feel lighter. I know because not only has this been what saved my marriage, but because I have worked with a number of couples who have been in this stressful place and I've seen this process be what makes a difference. This is the same process I work individually with my clients on. Recognize, feel, activate. So day one, if you missed that training, is about recognizing. We were building awareness around triggers and patterns. So I am asking you questions. They're in your free workbook where you can really get to know what is going on in your relationship that goes from a productive argument or a productive conversation to an argument that's not going the way you want it to. We're going to figure out what your triggers are, what those patterns are. We have to know what is broken or what's not working well in order to know what to fix. 
You cannot just say, I want my relationship to get better. My dog wants to join you guys. <laughs> Hi, Rizzy. You can't just say, I want my relationship to get better if you're not spending the time getting to know what pieces are broken. You wouldn't go to, you know, a mechanic is not going to say, well, I'm just going to flip a few things around and see if this fixes your car. No, you need to know what's not working. And then you can fix it. It's as easy as that. We don't need to stress. We don't need to drag this out. Okay, something's not working great. Let's figure out how to fix it. That's step one, the recognize. Step two is the feel. Understanding how you and your partner come into life with two different lived experiences, who you are, what your personalities are, how you experience things, and how that contributes to the responses in a argument, in a situation. Step three is where we are today, activate. We're going to talk about proactive tools to improve the quality of conversations and decision making. I love the term proactive communication as opposed to reactive. Um, reactive communication is when something happens and somebody says something about it and the other person feels defensive and then this person's idea gets stronger and this person gets more defensive and then it just goes back and forth and it escalates and it's reaction. It's emotionally driven. This is typically when we're taking jabs at one another. We're bringing out that past resentment. We're bringing up this topic that even if it's not what we're talking about, it becomes what we're talking about. We all have those, but we want to build in more proactive communication saying, I'm investing in my relationship. I'm investing this time and this energy into continuing to nurture and care for my relationship because it's worth this. That is proactive tools and communication. That's what we're doing today. Um, the groundwork for this training in general for all three days uh, is one, we are doing this for you as a human, as your relationship. Also, we're doing this because less fighting in the home does benefit the children. It is the modeling that they see. It's how they're going to internalize what to expect in a relationship. And less fighting is going to cause less stress, uh, less emotional distress for our kids. And it's just a really important thing that they learn how to have respectful communication um, and how to interact with other people in so many ways. And this is the first place they learn it. This is a personal journey for you. So it's not going to look the same as the next person, as me, as an influencer online. So know that this is unique to you, your story, your journey, but also you're not alone in the feelings and experiencing you're having. This training was made because I've heard these things over and over. It was made because I lived this experience where I thought things weren't going to work and I found a way to get to the other side with my partner and to have, honestly, the kind of relationship that I dreamt of. This is unique to you, but you are not alone in, in needing this. Also, you might be starting this work. Um, usually it's the women, women who I connect with first. It's usually the women who show up for a training or show up to learn first. But the goal here is that your partner is going to join in because either they're going to see the change in you and they're going to want some of that, or they are wanting to step up as an equal and invest in the relationship as well. So my goal is never for you as a mom to be carrying the entire load and for me to say, oh, here's something else. You take the charge in your relationship. This should be for you and your partner together. And I also have heard and seen and been a part of situations where the partner is not stepping up. And so to that, if that is you, I know it sucks and I'm sorry. Um, but that doesn't mean the work is not worth it. What I say to you, if you're in that position is that you will always live with you, no matter where you go, there you are. And so if you have a chance to get better at understanding yourself, at communicating with someone you're working closely with, I never think it's a waste, no matter what that looks like for you and your partner in the future. Um, and the goal for this workshop is for you and you and your partner to disrupt one or more unhelpful. This is helpful because I didn't change it again. What are more unhelpful patterns that you and your partner get stuck in? So this work goes a lot further. Um, when I'm working with my, my clients, you know, there's a lot of pieces to this, but I wanted to give you a starting point, a groundwork to say, we did this workshop and we were able to break an unhelpful pattern. We were able to understand and disrupt this. That is what I would measure as success in this three-part workshop. So today is activate. Um, this is just all about taking what you've learned 
and putting it into proactive communication. I think where we miss the mark a lot here is that we think that communication and teamwork and parenting with our partners should just be natural. And this natural idea prohibits us often from getting more tools and learning and taking new approaches. But if we're on a journey for life with another person, it makes sense that we have to stop and do a tune-up. It makes sense that we need to have a time where we're getting to know who we are now because you have changed. You've changed in so many ways. Your partner has changed in so many ways. And so we get to know that and we get to know how we work together. This first point here is establishing ground rules for respectful disagreement and hard conversation. So I want you to think about this a little bit with like a, a business or workplace hat. And I'm not trying to make your relationship not sexy. I'm not trying to take all the mystique and romance out and just make it, you know, passing ships in the night. But I truly believe that we have to have this like ground level foundation in order to get to that intimacy, in order to connect emotionally, we need to have this structure. And that's what I want you to have here. So this is literally having conversations about how to have conversations. <laughs> I guide my clients through this. I like sit with them in it and we talk and we plan and we, we do these things together. Um, but in your workbook, you're going to see what are some of the ground rules? Is it that you never use the word divorce because that escalates things? Is it that you um, are not allowed to name call? Is it that if someone says the word timeout, they can walk away and take a breather with no questions asked? Like once you know your triggers, once you know the patterns, these are the ways we interrupt them. We have to have some ground rules just like in the office, you know, you have some expectations of how you solve a problem together. There is a process. There are things you do and don't do in hard conversations. The second point here was pivotal for my husband and I as new parents, probably the number one thing. Um, and it's something that I always make an option for my couples. I don't make them do this, but most of them choose to do this. We implement weekly check-ins. This is going to look different for everyone. For some of my couples, this is where they talk about finances, schedules, work appointments, um, you know, family things in the house. This is where they really touch base on expectations. Um, and for some people, this is more of like a reflection. So you get to decide what works best for you. Is it best for you to really be forward thinking or to reflect on the week behind or to make space for both of these? But weekly check-ins are like uh, putting a bucket outside your door. Um, and there's something going on that you want to talk to your partner about. Maybe it's getting more, ha more help with the household chores, for example. Here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want your partner to come home um, from work and maybe you're already at home, you're starting on something, your partner comes in the door and you're like, hey, I'm gonna need this, 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 and this, or this isn't working, or I'm pissed off about this. Um, that is reactive communication. I'm not saying you can never bring those things up, but proactive communication is giving this a place. So again, we're picturing this bucket outside your door. And when something comes up and you're like, We've got to talk about this. This isn't working. Or this is really great. I want to tell my partner about it. We put it in the bucket and we schedule a weekly check-in where we pull that bucket up and we take the things out and we're like, oh, we needed to address this. We needed to address this. And you're giving both of you the opportunity to come to a check-in together, um, not being blindsided, not you know, having the time to kind of control for how you show up and your mood and your expectations. It's the place where you have these hard conversations or or great celebratory conversations. That's awesome too. But we want to give that a place. So having weekly check-ins is like having that bucket at the door. We can't handle everything in real time the best way that we want to, but we make this bucket and we make a time. Maybe it's every Sunday evening or maybe it's Saturday morning breakfast before the kids get up. Um, some people start with 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. This is going to be different for everyone, but give it a place to go. 
What is also great about this is then it's not an open tab in your brain that's just like going, going, going. Am I ever going to get to talk to him about this? Am I ever going to get to bring this up? I have to remember this. I have to remember this. This is still on my mind. You give it a place to go. That is weekly check-ins. Um, I love helping people set these up because they, again, are very unique, but they can be so transformational. Um, again, this whole goal here is to increase proactive communication instead of just reactive. So you're planning for the week ahead. You're talking about expectations. You're revisiting, hey, this is something this week that didn't work for me, or this is a time that I did not feel seen and validated, or babe, you did this and it was awesome. It was such a small gesture, but it felt so good to me. We're giving feedback on purpose. So as we're working through this, um, this is in your workbook. Those of you, if you've not downloaded the workbook, there are two options. Um, in the files of the Facebook group, there is uh, this workbook. It's just called Fighting Better Challenge Workbook. Um, it's also, I have a link that goes out in the emails. If you prefer to type, um, it's a Canva template and you can just make it your own and type in there. But this first part is to understand, and I would encourage you to ask your partner this too. What do you need to feel safe enough to express yourself during a hard conversation or disagreement? Yesterday, we talked about how there's this pattern, like some people lash out, some people kind of retreat, and then they keep their feelings inside, and then they're upset because they didn't get to share them. We want to be able to have hard conversations or disagreements. What do you need to feel safe to do that? So in thinking about this, you're going to be considering what are your unique triggers and patterns? That was from day one of the workshop. And then ask your partner to also provide their safe ground rules. This is a respect thing. This is a first your introspection, getting to know yourself. And it's a respect thing. Me and my partner are different. In order to have good communication, these things have to be true. Okay, and make it a realistic list, right? Like we're not raising our voices in front of the baby. If that happens, we're taking a timeout, calling a T and we're taking a timeout and we'll come back to it. We're not, we're not bringing up divorce because then that feels like a card that someone holds and it, it threatens security. It threatens the safety of the relationship. Like those are some examples there. For check-ins, um, what I want you to be able to do and identify here, again, this can start with 10 minutes a day, 30 minutes a week, like you figure out what works best for you, or, you know, I can help you do that. But you want to give things, again, that bucket, a place to go and be taken care of so they don't continually stress you out. So you might be talking about a time you felt well loved this week. That positive reinforcement is huge. And it's huge for you to identify when you're feeling really loved and cared for so that you can know, okay, this is really important to me. I'm going to ask for more of this. I'm going to accept more of this. And you can share that with your partner and ask them the same thing. It might surprise you the times that they feel most loved by you. Um, this is a time for concerns. This is a time to outline, you know, the decisions you have to make together. And it's a good place for weekly planning. And then I just touched on this, but Positive reinforcement. I use this phrase that you get to teach people how to love you well. Um, I, I work with my clients on like love languages and love styles and just kind of figuring out, using those as a starting point. I don't think that they are the full picture. We don't just say, well, here's your love style. So this is what you need. But those are the starting point I use. And we get to teach our partners how to love us well. And how to love us well in different seasons. Um, the struggle I see for a lot of the moms I work with, especially if I'm just working with mom one-on-one, -on -one, is that they're not even sure. Life has changed so much. Things have been overwhelming. They don't know. They couldn't tell me this is how I feel most loved. And so that's a starting point, is being able to recognize those things and then being able to teach that to your partner. And get curious about your partner, too. Get curious about what makes them feel really loved, about what makes them feel supported by you. And then use your family values to help drive decisions and conversations. I can't get too deep into this um, because of our time restraints, but I do have a blog post on this. Um, and I think I have a podcast on it too, if this is, is ringing a bell for you. But 
I'm not talking about like cheesy live, laugh, love kind of family values, but like, it's important for us that our home is, you know, respectful. It's important for us that our home is a place of exploration. It's important. You fill in the blank. And this is a way that we can make a framework to drive decisions and conversations. Um, I talk about this a lot when people are navigating things like sleep training or not sleep training, um, baby, you know, daycare or in-home care or all of these things that we feel labored by figuring out and deciding, um, knowing what you want your family and home to look like and feel like can be such a strong way to not make, you know, a rash decision or not feel like your ideas are competing, but to have that, that framework, right? That, that baseline, these are our family values. How do we make a decision based on that? So I know this is a brief overview. There's so much more we could go into uh, with today's activate topic. I really want to hear what comes up for you as you're going through the workbook and as you're addressing these things. Um, these are all things, you know, that I know need more time. <laughs> they need more training. So I'll, I'll make a point to talk about some of these things more on the blog and um, on the podcast, but they're, they're important. And they're things that um, I help my clients go into more uniquely. But today's focus, what we are here for today, uh, day three, wrapping this up is to look for those opportunities to talk about things proactively instead of reacting in that high emotion time. This is my invitation to you. Starting conversations with value statements and goals. Knowing what you want to get out of a conversation. Getting on the same page before you can have a conflict. And building on the things that do go well. So proactive communication is also talking about the things that are going well and how to build on those. Um, if you are thinking about, okay, this gave me some big ideas. It gave me some insights. What would I do with this next? Um, I'm always in all these three days, I'm telling you, this is where I would go with a client. If I were working with them one-on-one -on -one or with them as a couple, this is something that I'm happy to dig in more with you if you're interested in coaching. But I also want to give you like, if you want to DIY this, this is what you do. This is where you go next. It is understanding your personal and family values. So I would visit the blog post and um, podcast on that or just spend some time like what is most important to us what values can we use to drive our decisions creating a personalized layout for a weekly check-in or a business meeting what is most important for you to have a place to talk about to have a place to decide on or lay out the expectations or to share the heavy hard things and then also I didn't talk about this today very much but Building in a space for me time and us time to avoid that depletion and resentment. So this might be one night a week where you are off duty and you can do something you really love or Saturday mornings or whatever this is um, for you and your partner to make sure you have some protected me time and that you have some protected us time. And that doesn't have to be fancy. Um, my husband and I, we don't get out every week with a babysitter. We don't get out every, maybe every month. I don't know. But it's not like every week we go out to a fancy dinner and movie and we have these conversations. Um, you can have at home date nights. You can, you know, just put down the damn phones for 15 minutes and make eye contact and have a connection at the end of the day. This is us time. It is not about fancy. If you have had an aha moment or you're thinking like, what now? Um, I do have a uh, link for free 10 minute conversation where it's just like, let me help you keep the wheels turning. Um, I want this, I, I built this training because I know this framework has helped the couples I work with. And because I see how many couples out here are having a hard time with their communication, with fighting, with arguing. And then you feel the guilt because you're arguing in front of the baby. And then you feel like, do I press on or do I just like repress my voice so that I don't cause harm or I don't, you know, make this worse? Um, this is something a lot of people are going through. And so I just want couples 
and individuals who are feeling more confident, who are feeling more connected, who know that even though this is hard, there are ways to make this better. Just like with anything else, if you want to get in better shape, you just put a little time in every day or as often as you can into your, your wellness. If you want to get good at basketball, I don't know why that came up. I don't play basketball. None of my clients that are moms are out there playing basketball, but you would put a little practice in every day. And the same has to be true for your relationship. This is not just going to magically blissfully flow like the way we were sold in fairy tales. Um, It takes intention and it takes work and it's okay. So if you are having these ideas and moments, um, let's do a free 10 minute call and like figure out how to keep those wheels turning. Or we can do voice memos together. I do um, voice memos on Facebook Messenger, Instagram, or my favorite app called Voxer so that we can just like say, hey, this is what this made me think. What what should I do next? Or I just wanted to share this aha moment. I love to hear from you. I love to give you um, a couple steps of feedback and ideas that can take you to the next spot. So that is wrapping us up for today. Um, I'm checking. I don't think I see any comments in real time. So watch this again. Watch this with your partner. Share this with your partner. If you haven't watched day one and day two, um, go ahead and go back to that. And um, yeah, share it with your partner. Make this something that you get to enjoy. You get to enjoy getting better at. Enjoy getting better at your relationship. It is possible. You deserve it. And hopefully these three days of this workshop have given you um, some really great starting points. I want that for you. And if you have more you want to talk about, please reach out. I am rooting for you. I believe in you. And I believe that there are ways to have a better relationship after having a baby. And you deserve it.